All right, welcome once again to Sami and Mathematics. You remember we've been having a series on modern algebra and we've been discussing homomorphism. Now, I discussed the concept of homomorphism and in this video I want to discuss the kernel of homomorphism. But let me give you a little recall. You remember I said when we have a group, G, with its binary operation, and you have another group, H, with its binary operation, say this. Now, we say that homomorphism is a function of mapping that takes G with its binary operation to H. So that for any two elements you pick in G, if we combine those two elements with this binary operation, the homomorphism is going to give us the combination of the two images with respect to this other binary operation. Uh, this is what I taught in my last video. You can take a look at that in the last video on homomorphism. But what I want to discuss now is what we call the kernel of homomorphism. Now, what is the kernel? The kernel of homomorphism, the kernel of homomorphism is simply that set, kernel of homomorphism. So if we start like this, or oh, if F is a homomorphism, is a homomorphism, then the kernel of homomorphism is a set. So remember, it is a set. It is a set of those elements in G. Those elements in G such that f of x will be equals to E. And what is E? E of H. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about the set of elements that are in this group that will map to the identity element in this group. So those sets of elements that are in this group that will map to the identity element in this group. So what do we need to know when we want to find the kernel of homomorphism? The first thing is that we must know the identity of this particular group. Once we know the identity of this particular group, then we can identify those elements that map to them, and that is the kernel. We also have what we call the image. The image of F, the image of F is simply those elements here, those elements here, that is f of x, this element here in h, such that those f of x is equals to the element that is in this, which is x. So the image of f are those images in h, such that um, you can even take out this since you already know that this is here and you refer to the x that is in G with respect to this binary operation. Now, the first thing that will come to your mind is that what are the examples, clear examples of the kernel of homomorphism. A good example of the kernel of homomorphism is this. Now, if we have an example here, we have a mapping F that maps the set of non-zero real positive real numbers to non-zero positive real numbers. Let's accept that this group is a multiplicative group and also this group is a multiplicative group. This is a group, this is a multiplicative group. The identity element here is one. So take note that the identity element here is actually one in R star. Now let us take a very good example. So let's take an homomorphism of f such that x is equal to the absolute value of x. Now, what are those elements that I will substitute in this function that will give me 1? What are those elements that I will take from here? And you see that those elements, the kernel of this f is simply minus 1 and 1. Let's think about it. When you substitute minus 1 here, it is going to give you 1 that is here, the identity element here. When you substitute 1 into this function, 
that is f of minus 1 is equal to minus 1 which is equal to 1 and f of 1 is going to give you absolute value of 1 which is still the same thing as 1 so you see that this set is actually the kernel of this homomorphism you must take note that this is an homomorphism because f of a b with this binary operation is going to be the same thing as a b which is the same thing as a times b which is f of a and f of b so this is a homomorphism and this is the kernel of the homomorphism so let us see another example another example is let us see f of x equals to um maybe n f of x equals to n where the homomorphism is actually z mapping to z z mapping to z you can see that the um the kernel the kernel of this homomorphism will simply be zero why is it zero because f of zero will give you what zero so the only element that you are going to substitute here to give you an identity element here remember that the identity element in z remember that this is z plus take note this is z plus the identity element here is actually zero and the identity element here um, let's keep this as a positive integer as a integers as a whole so this is the kernel of homomorphism another example is f of x equals to um, x raised to the power of n this is a function that is taking r plus to r plus non-zero positive real numbers so you see here that once i put in f of zero here I'll take note that my n is for the positive real number. So we exclude, so for z, that is from 0, 1, 2, 3 upwards. So this is including 0. So this is going to give me x to the power 0, which is equals to um, 1. So you see that my kernel in this case is actually equals to 1, uh, is actually equals to 0. The kernel of f is actually equals to zero but is it only zero is it only zero take note that if i substitute one here i'm going to have x raised to the power of one here so it all depends on what my x is if my x is one this is going to give me one at the end of the day but let us take a very a constant fixed number so let us say let let x be fixed let x be fixed so in this case we can say zero so in the case where x is fixed we are going to have f of um x equals to a raised to the power of a so let a be fixed here so you see in that case that f of zero is going to be equals to a raised to the power of zero which is equals to one so you see that this one is the identity element here while zero here is the uh, and then the element that is here that maps to this now finally you see that in in um, in an isomorphism in an isomorphism isomorphism I want to give a very important statement you can see that the kernel the kernel of isomorphism so if f is an isomorphism if f is an isomorphism the kernel of isomorphism is actually equals to what the normal subgroup so the equals to the normal subgroup actually equals to the normal subgroup and take note whenever whenever you have uh, a kind of one-to-one -one, your kernel your kernel of f is going to be the trivial subgroup trivial subgroup so in a case where you have an isomorphism the kernel is actually the trivial subgroup and what is the trivial subgroup it is the um, set of the identity element in the domain group here in the domain group here so e of g so in a case whereby you have an isomorphism just know that the kernel of f is going to be the normal subgroup 
which is the subgroup itself. And secondly, it's going to be the trivial subgroup because it's the identity element that is here that also maps to this place. So there are so many examples that one can actually apply. And for the last example, which I'm going to show you, the last example I'm going to show you is very, very important to those who do modern algebra. Now, let us take a group um, G L 2R. Let this be our first group. Let it be our first group. Now, let us take A from this G L 2R. And let us take an homomorphism that maps A to the determinant of A. Let us take a homomorphism that maps A to the determinant of A. You will see clearly that the kernel of this homomorphism, the kernel will simply be, the kernel of this homomorphism will be those matrices in SL2R. And what is SL2R? They are those matrices that the determinant is going to be equal to 1. Because, you know, when we map this to this, this is actually this, and this one is a member of R um, star, because the determinants you are going to be having here is from R. So, you see that the kernel of homomorphism are those special matrices that their determinant is also equal to 1, because the identity element here is actually equal to 1. And the uh, element we are taking here is this special matrices, which is a member of this. That will be the kernel of homomorphism. Thank you very much. You can always check other videos on kernel to explain more about homomorphism. Thank you and bye.